So folks, how long has it been? How long have we been enduring the whole conversation that Democrats and their allies, independents, many independents, are actually uh, leading to the moral decay of this country? It's an argument that they keep bringing up over and over and over again, whether it's our stance on abortion and women's rights or gay rights, the, the party that takes anyone and everyone has always been the target of the argument of moral decay in this country. I kid you not. And you know this, right? I mean, I, I've been defending why Democrats believe what they believe, why some of the independents believe what they believe, while Republicans have been standing over on the other side of the court screaming that that's leading to the moral decay of our country. But yet, there there is quite a dichotomy that exists right now, folks, between Republicans and Democrats. And this interview that I want to share with you has really nailed that whole concept home. This interview was between Chris Sununu, who I keep wanting to call John Sununu, because I'm old enough to remember his dad, who would probably, I don't know if the old boy's still alive, but he ought to kick his son in the ass for what he's been up to here recently. So there's this interview between George Stephanopoulos, who's got this show called This Week, and Chris Sununu, who is the New Hampshire governor. So as we know, Chris Sununu was a strong supporter of Nikki Haley. But now he's 100% in it for Trump. So what, what is this whole notion of party over country? And why, why are we allowing the Republicans to get away with this? I mean, you got a guy who I think is a criminal, Donald Trump. I mean, that's my opinion. I think the man's a criminal. Lock him up yesterday. You got this guy, this clown down at Mar-a-Lago. You know, who's, who's every bit of what, like what I just said, is a criminal in my opinion. But yet the country, many, many people, including evangelicals, are willing to get behind him and give him a mulligan, which, by the way, if you don't know, golfing is an extra stroke allowed after a poor shot, not counted on the scorecard. I mean, he's they're always handing out mulligans for Donald Trump, no matter what he does. Um, I, I just can't uh, fathom, you know, they, they talk about the moral decay of the Democrats. You're dragging us down as a country. My God, where are we going to be in 20 years? You know, this, this freaking redundant argument that I've, I've been hearing ever since I was old enough to listen to the babble from the mouths of some of these Republicans about the moral decay. I mean, they, they parrot that incessantly. But yet they are exhibiting the strongest amount of moral decay and their support of Donald Trump and handing out mulligans left and right, letting him do whatever the hell he wants to do and getting behind him 115%. And not only evangelicals, but it's it's surprising to me to see the the evangelicals scurry with their long skirts down past their ankles, you know, all of these, all these people that, that can't stand gays, that can't stand women's rights, you know, all of a sudden, you know, they're exhibiting this, this moral decay that only we can see, evidently, evidently only we can see it. And here's what I'm talking about. So this interview that George Stephanopoulos had with Chris Sununu on his show this week, he pushed Sununu on his individual views about Trump, given his past disapproval of the former president's conduct, with Sununu repeatedly re responding by saying 51%. I, evidently, that's the new tagline, 51%. And that represents 51% of Americans didn't see Trump's multiple indictments or his election denialism or his actions on January 6th 
2021 as disqualifying. So now Chris Sununu is comfortable backing Trump for president. Like none of, none of that ever matters. And I, and I get that they're, they're all in for their candidate, but this isn't a basketball game, folks. This is not, you know, the, a baseball game, a football game. This is not your alma mater, right? And this is important stuff here. We can't have a country that exists where people insist on putting party over country. So here's what, um, Sununu said, folks, he said, this trial that's coming up on Monday, the hush money trial for the former president, Donald Trump, he says, this trial is not going to have a major political ramification that a lot of people think it may have. When it comes to these issues, people see it as more as a reality TV situation at this point, he said. They really do. They see it more as a reality TV situation. Reality TV. It, it's like, since when is, is wrong not really wrong? Maybe if it happens on TV, it's not really wrong. It's like some show that's evolving in front of them. And it, it doesn't matter that it's, that it's being handled by our judicial system, which is charged with enforcing the laws of our country and has been for over 200 years. It does not matter evidently to these people that these cases are being tried in that sort of court of law. It's just reality TV. And you could tell by the way that they, they back up what the president says about a judge or what the president says about a judge's daughter and all that trash talk. It, 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 He's devalued the judicial system of our country to the basis where people like Chris Sununu are saying that Americans see it more as a reality TV show at this point, folks. That the same legal system that prosecutes and jails criminals on a daily basis in Donald Trump's case is only a reality TV show. George Stephanopoulos, and I'll probably mess that name up again. Sorry, George. He went on to say, I'm asking you about right and wrong here. You're comfortable with the idea of supporting someone who's convicted of a federal crime as president? Sununu went on to say, no, I don't think any American is comfortable with any of this. He replied, they don't like any of this, of course. But I mean, when it comes to actually looking at each of these trials, as they kind of take place, whether it's this year or next or as they kind of line up right now, this is about an election. This is about politics. So it's about politics. It's not about right or wrong. It's about politics. Again, reinforcing that whole notion that they're giving Donald Trump free reign. And by the way, Donald Trump is laughing all the way to the freaking bank because that's what he does. I mean, he's, he's literally Donald Trump is going to print pardons. Like he's got a, a, a cranking out $100 bills and they're actually working. You know, every time he goes to the Seven Eleven, he's going to be cranking out pardons like no tomorrow. I mean, it's just a, uh, it, it, it's a, situation where we have a me, me, me president and it should be a we, we, we type situation. It should be about America and not about Donald Trump. And, and people like Chris Sununu have made it about Donald Trump because that's the best thing they got right now. That's the best thing they got on the grill. If you're hungry, that's what we're serving. Bunch of crap. So Chris Sununu said that, and then George Stephanopoulos came back and said, wait a second right there. Your words are very, very clear on January 11th of 2021. You said that President Trump's rhetoric and his actions contributed to the insurrection. No other president in history has contributed to an insurrection, so please explain. Sununu again returned to the big picture. For me, it's not about him. 
as much as it is having a Republican administration. Party over country. It's all a reality TV show, what happens in the courts. So Chris then said, I understand it doesn't make sense to you, George, but look at the polls. What you are telling me is you don't understand why 51% of this country is supporting Donald Trump, Sununu said, suggesting opposition to, opposition to Trump was based on elitism. So my opposition to Donald Trump is all based on elitism. It has nothing to do with what's right and what's wrong. I mean, I resent that, that someone is going to stand there and say, everything that I'm talking about is just based on elitism. It's not about right or wrong. That's the whole point is holding this man accountable. It is 100% about what's right and what's wrong. And then George went on to say, you would support him for president even if he's convicted in the Manhattan case. I just want to say the answer to that is yes, correct? And Sununu replied with enthusiasm, yeah, me and 51% of America. So what's going on, folks, with this, this situation? I mean, they, like I said, for years, they've been saying that Democrats are leading this country into moral decay leading the country downhill. But yet, here they are, pretending that this man, in my opinion, like I said, is not a criminal. Handing out the mulligans left and right. And it doesn't matter what happens in the court of law. I mean, it's... We, we, we need a country where people can see right from wrong. I mean, it's like we need a country where people can add one and one and get two. So this Monday, folks, we've got this, this whole trial that's coming up. And there's Donald Trump in the middle of it. You've got Michael Cohen, Sarah McDougal, Stormy Daniels, and David Pecker. And who in the hell would call their son... Or, or, or not stop the family name, Pecker. I mean, it doesn't, at some point, doesn't someone say, hold it, this, this, this name is not working out. Maybe it might have worked in the 1880s, might have worked in the 1900s, but calling my kid Pecker isn't going to be something that we're going to do. I mean, the, you can change names, right? So this trial that's coming up, again, Politico is saying that Donald, Trump, Donald Trump's first criminal trial scheduled to begin Monday is set to feature a familiar cast of characters in the witness stand. That's because the felony charges against the former president center on a well-trodden sequence of salacious events. Trump's affair with porn star Stormy Daniels, hush money payments to prevent Daniels from going public on the eve of the 2016 election, and the alleged scheme to falsify records tied to those payments. And by the way, you know, if you want to hear more of Michael Cohen, he's on TikTok. If you've got TikTok, he's on that. Uh, generally, just about every night at 10 o'clock, if you want to hear what, what Michael Cohen has to say. So the cast of characters, you've got Pecker here, who used to run the National Enquirer. He evidently has paid out $30,000 to a former Trump doorman to make him quiet about a love child that he says Trump had fathered. He also handed out $150,000 to keep Karen McDougal quiet about her claims that she had had a sexual encounter with Trump. And then you've got Michael Cohen, who a lot of people say, you can't trust Michael Cohen. This man's a liar. No, this, this man's had an epiphany, folks. And if you hear him talk, and again, I'd suggest TikTok. I don't know if anybody out there listens to TikTok. But he's on there. And this is a man who's had an epiphany. I didn't, I did, used to not like Michael Cohen, obviously, when all of this was going on. And I slammed him left and right. But the man has seen the light. And he's trying to make amends. He, he's a man who believes in country over party. And I believe that with 110%. 
And he's at the center of this, this deal in this hush money trial that's coming up because he, he was actually falsifying, helping Donald Trump falsify, allegedly falsifying, they say here in the article, various business records to mask the true purpose of payments to Michael Cohen and how he had to push money around very secretly to keep people like Stormy Daniels quiet. They expect Michael Cohen to talk about the ongoing catch and kill agreement that he had with David Pecker to benefit Donald Trump. His conversations with Trump and Stormy Daniels. And God, no, we don't need to hear her talk about, I hope this doesn't come up again, all this stuff that she intimate details about Donald Trump. We want don't want to hear any of that. God, I hope not. But, I mean, all of this stuff is coming to light again, folks. Hope Hicks is going to be evidently in this whole thing. All of this is coming to light. And it, and it, and it just, I, I, don't, I don't know how you can look at all of this and what Donald Trump has done and just shred what it means to be an American in favor of a freaking a guy who'd be who Donald Trump who should be sitting in prison prison right now. I really uh, find it hard to believe, and and that that age old dichotomy between Democrats and Republicans of leading the country into moral bankruptcy, you know, is just turned out to be a bunch of BS, isn't it? When they're supporting a guy who who at best is is a is is a is a minor. Th- thug and criminal and at worst is a full-on criminal i mean it's just amazing to me that these are the same people that have chanted for years you're going to hell you you, you know you're what you believe is morally bankrupt you know and here they are folks party over country and they seem to be leading their very own parade tangible in this case as opposed to what they've claimed that Democrats have been doing, you know, for years and years, their moral bankruptcy is tangible. You can touch it. You can feel it. You can smell it. And I don't want to tell you what it smells like, folks. I want to thank you for joining me. I did get a little long-winded today, but I want to thank you, and we'll look for you next time around. Till then.